You want to be in the know, right? So you got to listen in. Styles to know today. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 381, Styles to Know, Modern Farmhouse, and Grand Millennial. You may not even heard of that second one. So we are going to shed some light on what these styles are, um, what the hallmark pieces of these styles are, and how you can achieve the style if you're interested, and sources where you can learn more and see photos of these styles in action. Yeah, I think you could even mix them if you wanted to. I think you could. You're very <laughs> daring. But you are the master mixer. So you could definitely do it. Um, before we get going uh, full throttle today, I wanted to give a shout out to any of our new listeners that were in the audience last week when I spoke at the uh, meeting of the PEO, that's the Philanthropic Educational Organization, and the chapter in my local area, they were kind enough to invite me to come talk to them about what I'm up to, our podcast, and podcasting in general. So I got to meet these wonderful ladies and spoke to a whole bunch of them about podcasting and how If you want to be a lifelong learner, podcasting is where it's at. If you're a multitasker, podcasting is where it's at. And so I had a bunch of them really interested in podcasting in general and subscribing to DTT. So I think we've got some new listeners from that group. So I want to give a shout out to anybody that was there. Thank you so much for having me. I had a wonderful time talking with you. And what an interesting organization it is. Uh, I didn't know about it before I was asked to speak, but it is doing amazing work. I think it's international. And the main goal is to promote, celebrate, promote and celebrate the advancement and education of women. Love it. Wonderful. And my mother-in-law was in that organization. Really? Oh my Yes, she was. And I remember- uh, That's so cool, Anita. Kevin used to ask her what the PEO stood for. And back then, I don't think that they would say what it stood for. And so she made up something that I won't repeat. But- uh, (laughs) Was that B? She made up something. That was B. That you can't they repeat. Mu- I can't repeat it, but oh, it, which my. is not. I, they must have told. She wouldn't have come up with that. But anyway, it's a great organization. She was a part of it for a long time, and so. Uh, good for them. That sounds yeah, wonderful. Started, so shout out to the PEO people. Yeah, yeah. And it, it started in 1869. And, you know, if you're looking for something to maybe get involved in, any volunteer opportunities in your local area, maybe see if they have a chapter because I was blown away by the good works that these ladies are doing, uh, enabling women all around the globe to further their education and have these opportunities. Uh, really um, transforming lives. So I was honored to speak to them. That was really cool. And thanks for asking me. And welcome to Decorating Tips and Tricks. Um, so today we're going to talk about first modern farmhouse style. What is it? How can you get it? Um, maybe giving you the heads up that you've got some of it going on. And then we've got at least one good example of um, modern farmhouse that you can see on the web. So modern farmhouse. I definitely feel like I have some of this going on. I think you definitely do too. And it's interesting how farmhouse style has been around for a while and was super hot a few years ago. And now it shifted into this modern farmhouse style that's much more popular. So it's interesting how it's a, they, you know, how people take what's out there and then kind of change it a little bit to update it all the time. Exactly. So maybe there is truly nothing new under the sun, but we're just sort of transforming it a little bit or tweaking it here and there. So it it's definitely more sophisticated than the farmhouse style you might have thought of many years ago or you know more than a handful for sure. You know, it's not chippy really. There's some patina going on for sure in some natural woods and whatnot, but it's not the, the chippy distressed farm signs and things like that. It's much cleaner, more sophisticated. Yeah. I would say uh, the the patina comes in, in in rustic charms and the use of natural woods, uh, not in the 
artificially distressed kind of look. Um, there's a lot of industrial touches as well. Um, metals, black, uh, very neutral. Um, it's more browns than you might expect. Well, it's uh, interesting you say the industrial because I would say that modern farmhouse is kind of a mix of industrial and farmhouse pulled together. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, the emphasis is kind of function over fuss, although, you know, these very sophisticated sort of streamlined pieces uh, with their rugged patina, you know, they, they're they beautiful as well as function well, but it, there's just not a lot of extra fluff, if you know what I mean. That's true. I would agree. It's, it's kind of a pared down look. Uh, should we talk about some of the elements of it? Are you ready to... Yeah, sure. I just had a couple more things. Um, touches of salvage, wide plank floors, textures, um, and sort of the juxtaposition of the the cleaner, more modern looks with the 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 more rustic wooden touches. And that's I love that. You know, Andy and I both really love when there's two different, very divergent looks that are rubbing up against each other and making each other better for the, you know, the, the pairing and that's going on a lot in modern farmhouse. Yeah. And I think of it as having a lot of architectural salvage. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that's included. So there might be some patina there, but I agree with you. It's not about rusty, crusty, chippy in general. I think of maybe a long pine table with maybe some metal chairs sitting around the table. That might be kind of a quintessentially modern farmhouse look. Some wide plank flooring, I think, would be typical in one of these homes. And you know what? Another thing I think of, although not too much, but vintage vintage touches throughout the home, but nothing too too dear, nothing too fussy, and nothing too formal. Yeah, agreed. So you maybe you've got your your farmhouse table, um, and you're not surrounding it with. Uh, matching chairs, certainly not, but not even chairs that are wooden. Maybe you're putting ghost chairs or maybe you're putting like Eames chairs that are black with some metal legs, something right. like that. Like right. you're, you're really, um, you're adding a lot of clean lines. If you're using a big piece, like a big, uh, let's say aged pine or something like that table, then you're going to want to have a nice modern clean line going along with it. You might have a runner on it, but most likely you probably won't. It's, uh, you know, maybe you have a, a glass demijohn or some sort of simple lined big glass vase and there's just some branches in it. You know, you're not, it, it's going to be very, simple and sophisticated and sort of leaning towards the natural, not overdone. Yeah. And I don't see a lot of pattern here, not a lot of color. It's still fairly neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, I I think of white slip covered furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but because there's not a lot of color, this is where you do end up seeing a lot of textures, rustic woods, metals, and then things like cotton, canvas, wool. So maybe you have some uh, chunky throws with a wool rug and, or maybe a canvas rug. Uh, Killam rugs, I think really work well with this. Uh, but it's, it's really about the, the clean lines, like you said, and kind of a soothing, serene look. So there's not a lot of pattern or color there. Yeah, it'd be a hide rug too as an accent. Um, yeah, some some things that you might have around that could work for this look. Um, grain sack pillows, uh, but not cutesy ones. You know, some simple grain sack pillow uh, that could definitely transition into modern farmhouse. Uh, chunky rattan baskets or planters definitely can. Um, you know, I'm a chandelier lover. Your chandelier is probably not going to be distinctly modern farmhouse. It's more like metal pendants, right. uh, more like maybe a wrought iron type of chandelier over your table, something like that. So the, yeah, not, I have a little bit more glam going in on my house than being 
specifically modern farmhouse. So I can't really call my style anything except my own, and which is what we encourage you all to do. But I definitely know that I have touches of this modern farmhouse going on. I would agree. I think you do too. And I'm also thinking barn doors. I think that would be very mm-hmm. much fit in with this look. And leather chairs. I think leather chairs would go very well. And then as far as rugs go, you talked about the hide rugs. I think a sisal would work. And what about a plaid? I think a plaid would be very kind of no fuss and angular. And I think that would work well also. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And the paint that you're using, um, you're going to want it to have almost like uh, some semi-gloss working in there, some lacquer. So if you're taking maybe your the front door of a modern farmhouse home, a black shiny door, which is what I have, uh, almost like a patent leather uh, sprayed on look. Um, very simple color palette, white, black, neutrals. You might have a pop here and there, but not a lot of color, as Anita mentioned, but definitely adding in um, a, a black in your elements and your paints and your um, furnishings. Like if you're talking about something leather, black leather would be great. Um, it's a really nice mixture of some of the best of recent trends. I think sort of Modern Farmhouse has kind of pulled out a lot of great stuff. Because if you go really just super industrial, it's just so really, really hard. And it kind of sometimes gets a little steampunky. So Unfriendly. Unfriendly, right? And you think Mm -hmm. maybe like a very masculine loft or something like that. But, you know, for a family, maybe that's not the way you want to be living. And then the super, you know, sort of sweet farmhouse thing, you know, you could pull, like I'm saying, pull your grain sacks out of that, pull a few things out of there, but, you know, leave behind anything that was too precious and too cute. And then the all white thing that has been so prevalent, particularly on Instagram, sure, we're pulling out the whites for the walls and we're pulling out a very neutral color palette, but we're leaving behind all the other things that were just white. (laughs) You know, we're adding a lot more wood and black and some really cool metals. Metals. I think metals really figure prominently in this uh, style as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just patinaed metals. You can have super shiny, like I'm picturing maybe big oversized uh, gold pendants or something over a kitchen island or such. In metal chairs. I'm thinking metal stools in the kitchen, metal chairs. Uh, yeah, those aren't always the most comfortable, but yeah, I'm seeing, I'm thinking of a lot of, of metal, maybe a metal table with a wood top also yeah. would be great with the style. Yeah. And maybe even a little cement too. Maybe it's a cement mm-hmm. top sure. table that can work in as well. Um, and a really great example of people doing modern farmhouse really well is Studio McGee. They have, um, a blog, they have a YouTube channel, which is really entertaining to watch. They do beautiful homes. A uh, couple that you know basically started in their bedroom or guest room doing this little design firm, if you will, have really taken off. I think they have like 30 employees now and they have a store that's pretty spectacular. So definitely check out Studio McGee. We'll put the links to their various uh, sources of theirs in the show notes. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to DoseDaily.com. 
co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Okay, so this is a style that I had heard about a little bit. But then remember a few episodes back, we did um, our episode, I can't remember the number, but it was all about magazines, home decor magazines that are out and ones that we like and ones that are still around for people to enjoy. Well, in going through several of the magazines that I was reviewing for that episode, I kept tripping upon this style, a couple of full on articles and a couple of mentions, Grand Millennial Style. Do you remember which magazine it was featured in? Uh, I think there was something in El Decor. I can't oh, remember the other okay. ones. Um, but it is a really wonderful style. And I think was probably developed by people listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's incorporating all the things we love. Um, well, that, that we all, listeners and us. Yeah, 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 that we all love <laughs> and incorporating them in a fresh way, which is what we're telling you to do all the time. So it it is stuff like, you know, crystal and silver and chintz and wicker and even th- something like a needlepoint, which we don't really talk about, but, you know, could be incorporated in. And um, it, uh, items that have a timeless quality. Well, don't you think part of this is a backlash to the austere white rooms, everything white, everything just uh, pulled out of the room where it's just very simple, very little going on. And I think people, and as neutral as, I, I, my home is fairly neutral, but I love pattern. I love color. And, you know, I got tired of it being so neutral. So I at some point said, I can't keep going this. You know, I love my neutrals and I'm keeping them for my big pieces, but I'm adding back in patterns. I'm adding back in color uh, because I missed it. And apparently I wasn't the only one. Yes. And I think also if you weren't a person that went all neutral or all white, maybe you were a person that really jumped on the mid-century train. And mid-century is like, you know, it. I mean, obviously it had a hey, its original heyday, then it had a really big heyday again. But I, I think people are getting away from that too. And this is really um, a different look for sure. Um, it recognizes the power of good design and edited design, and it puts a fresh spin on it. Um, think of designers like Sister Parrish and Albert Hadley, like people that really had such an impact on decor many, many years ago that we're still talking about today that are still relevant. But this this style, which is not at all new, it's just a new way of packaging it and phrasing it, um, is sort of bringing it all back again and 
and again, just like when anything in fashion or whatnot comes back into vogue, it's a little bit different. So it's just a little bit different than it was before, uh, but definitely this appreciation for the past. So how can you get this look? Well, you've probably got a lot of it going on in your house right now, mm-hmm. or maybe it's probably. in your closet. Well, right? and I think, and I even think of Charles Faudry, who is very much the father, well, I shouldn't say the father, but just did country French so well. But now... It's still popular, but it's a reimagined French country French because it's it's scaled back. It's not so overdone, and that's the same with the style uh, with this grand millennial style. Is it's not as overdone as it used to be, so it's kind of an updated version mm-hmm. of it. So yep. I, I I would say that it's come back, but it's it's an updated version. Yeah. And even when I'm saying about the needle point, because, you know, they do talk about this as something that people are enjoying doing again, people are enjoying displaying in their home, but, you know, it's not a very traditional needle point. They have kind of sort of fun tongue in cheek needle points or something that's super cute or a little quippy or something like that. And there's a company called um, Lysette Designs and she's on Instagram and she has her website and... The needlepoints are not, you know, what you would necessarily expect. They're super fun. So if you're a needle pointer, you might want, or you want to be a needle pointer, have a look over there because it's, some of the stuff is really fun. It's really fresh. And, um, you know, as I'm saying, kind of tongue in cheek a little bit, (laughs) but I don't think the look is, is kitschy at all. I think it's it's truly an appreciation for timeless design, which no, and people seem to have skipped over for a few years. Well, and it's a lot of, and it's the details, the details, the embroidered linens, mm-hmm. b- botanical prints, all these beautiful things that some of us have always appreciated. I think they're, I, it's, they're just, they add so much to your home. Um, blue and white porcelain, that's super much, very much a part of this look. Scalloped edges, the little details that make things so beautiful. So this is, so in, in some ways, this is the opposite of what we just mentioned about the modern farmhouse where that has very clean lines and no embellishments. This is kind of more about the embellishments and the special touches. Yeah, exactly. So actually when I think about it, but it would be so long to say, I, I, I'm kind of thinking these combined are kind of my look. <laughs> right. Well, right. I said you could combine them. Right. Right. So I think that's kind of when I'm when I'm hearing what we're saying and mm-hmm. thinking about my house. I think that's sort of what's going on here. So I found a book. If people are interested, a lot of you are really interested in uh, you know designers and maybe going deeper on uh, you know what they've done and their looks and things like that. And we enjoy that as well. So here's a book that you could look at about two of the designers that we're mentioning in connection with this style. It's the Parrish Hadley Tree of Life, the History of the Legendary Design Firm. So um, so that's Sister Parrish and Albert Hadley. You know, they were combined and a design firm. And so it's it is a design book and that you're going to get beautiful pictures of their rooms and whatnot. But it's very interesting in and of itself, just the history of their progress as designers and then together and what they built. Um, so we'll put a link to the, in the show notes to that. Uh, I mentioned this Lyset designs with regard to these fun needle points. And then a company that I found that I, I think is truly representative of this style, it's on Instagram. It's called Cortland & Co. And so they must have... Um, Uh, also a website with their shop, but you could just see and get the feel for it on Instagram. Um, Lots of monograms, napkins, just some, just loveliness um, in all in keeping with this grand millennial style. So have a look over there. I'll put the link in the show notes uh, to that Instagram account as well. And I think of it too, it's going to include antiques and vintage items. And I think the way that it's updated, again, is that there's less. Yes. It's definitely in the room, but it's not as much stuff. And there isn't perhaps as much antique items as as the style had when it came around earlier. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, and, not, and definitely color. 
A lot of color. A lot pattern. of color and, and colors that would probably be more thought of as more feminine, but uh, you know, you can make that work by toning them down or mixing them or you know, that sort of thing. Right? Well, I found at my house, if I avoid the floral fabrics, mm-hmm. that's where I get into trouble. If I avoid them, he can overlook the other stuff. Oh, so it, it can be pink, but it needs to be a solid. Well, uh, no, I haven't. No. Well, I don't know. I haven't tried that. So that's, <laughs> that's stepping over a line there. But, uh, you know, so yes, blues, but but no florals. Okay. So it might be some okay. other pattern. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I think you know too much. I mean, you can have you can have too many florals. Maybe do that in mm-hmm. your uh, in your Diane James arrangement and keep your there you go your fabric solid. Um, yeah, I th- I think they're both really just fresh is the word for both mm-hmm. these styles. Very different, mm-hmm. but both very fresh. So have a look around, and if you have any questions about anything in those particular styles, certainly shoot us an email, and we would love to talk to you about it further. Do you have a crush today, Anita? I do. I've been hearing about this podcast for a while and I had some work to do the other day. And so I finally got to listen to it and it's only maybe six episodes. Mm -hmm. The Shrink Next Door. Ah! Have you listened to it? No. Okay. I had heard about it and I saw the, the image, the graphic, and I thought, I think it just, I just pictured like somebody murdered somebody and there was disposal of a body. And right. I just thought, I don't really need that kind of negativity in my life. <laughs> no, so no. <laughs> I don't want to be worried about where I'm going to be stuffing some, you know, body <laughs> or something. So I just thought, I just can't deal with that. And so I didn't really listen to it, but I thought I saw it and I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. And you know what? It's, there's no, there's no violence. There's no, um, it's actually about, I'll just tell you the gist of it. It's about this psychiatrist who kind of uh, conned this client of his or this patient of his into letting him have access to all of his money and the company that he owned. And he basically took over his lifestyle. And the guy became his servant. It's so bizarre. Is it's this such a true a, story? Well, of course it is. Because, you know, I love, I just love true stories. I should say I just love true stories. It's a real story. But to me, if it's true, it's 10 times more interesting to me because it really happened. Because again, if it's fiction, I mean, you can make up anything, but this really happened. So it's Dirty John-esque in that it really happened. So is, is is it sort of reported like Dirty John was, like an unfolding investigation? I did not listen to Dirty John. Oh, okay. Because Dirty John, it was, you know, came out of an LA Times reports on this story that was going on so there's it's kind of report it's kind of done they have a lot of narrative but it's kind of done like an investigative reporter would be doing it they're interviews well, kind of and like things the, like that oh yes yes he well this reporter would lived literally next door to the psychiatrist and he met him the guy who podcast i can't remember his name uh he was a reporter and he kind of figured out what was going on and that's when he started delving into it and started doing research. And yes, he interviewed all these people, did a lot of research. And then the patient was trying to get this guy's license revoked because he was still practicing. And then there were some follow-ups with that. I don't want to. That's the craziest thing. It's the most, well, it was in the Hamptons. Some crazy things going out there. <laughs> Yes, it's a beautiful it's place. That's interesting. Wow. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. Mm-hmm. And it's only it's, six episodes start well, to finish? Well, something like that. Something like But th- there's a couple episodes that are very, very short. So you Ooh. can finish it pretty quickly. Very interesting. You're just not even going to believe all the twists and turns. It's very interesting. And uh, yeah, so take it out. Check it out. Oh, I the will. The Shrink Next Door. And what's yours? Well, mine is... Um, A rose. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, a Bolero rose. I want to tell everyone about that. I had such luck with these roses last year that I actually expanded my front bed. I had about five of them and I want to put five more. It's a Floribunda. Um, If you're not sure what a Floribunda rose is, I'll link a blog post that I did about all different kinds of the different kinds of roses. Um, 
So it's a good time to get roses. Now that we're going into the winter, you can order them bare root. So I wanted to make you aware of this one. It smells absolutely divine. It has a very strong spicy scent sort of coupled with this old rose scent, uh, very large blooms, uh, white and hundred plus petals. It uh, is a shrubbier type of rose, so it it looks pretty good in the ground. Oftentimes, people say roses are like the the one flower that actually looks better cut, but this is a shrubbier rose, so it does look really pretty on the actual plant. Um, it's about three to four inches wide and tall at full uh, growth, and it'll be very happy in zones five through eleven. Um, I found it at a nursery I have never shopped at before. It's called Reagan Nursery, and I think they're up north in California. But I'm sure you could find it at um, your favorite online rose provider or at your local nursery, uh, maybe bare root or maybe as an actual plant. But I, when I first discovered this rose, I was walking past it at my local nursery, and I could smell it walking past. Oh, sounds heavenly. Yeah. So they're right where I pull my car in and I go into the house. And so I just talk about stopping to smell the roses. I actually kind of laugh at myself because I, I pretty much do that every time because they, they just never stop blooming. They're oh, nice. prolific bloomers. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, I guess I need to get one of those. Yeah, you need one of those. And you it'll be okay in your zone. Okay, and oh, our good. question today is from a newish listener, Roberta L. Roberta, we're Hi, so happy Roberta. to have you along with us. And thank you for reaching out. Uh, Roberta has some little kids, which we all love, little kids, but sometimes little kids have just a lot of stuff. Um, they do tend to have a lot of stuff for somebody so people. small. With lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. So Roberta had um, some questions about her family room. It's um, an area where, you know, you've got kids that are going to have stuff. So she's saying that choice things and whatnot are inevitable, but she'd love to transform the room a bit from being less of kid-centric to more relaxation, which sounds nice. Um, She had some questions about a gallery wall that she has. And again, the... A question that comes up all the time is, you know, what to do about the TV. So we're going to address some of those issues um, today. We have a few pictures, but we think that these issues are ones that, you know, plague is probably too strong of a word, but that definitely come up in other people's homes. You know, lots of kids stuff. How do you incorporate it? Uh, And how can you relax when you're looking at, you know, Polly Pockets or Legos on the floor? (laughs) And then what do you do with the TV when it's just sort of floating out there? And was she wanting to do something with her sofa as well? Did I remember Yeah, and then she said something Mm -hmm. about, you know, she was kind of ready to get rid of the furnishings. But, you know, I think you can go either way on those because they're very neutral. Right. So uh, I'm just going to address part of it and I'll let let you address the other parts of the room. So she has a very colorful rug, which actually she mentioned she wasn't that crazy about to you, but I think it's a lovely rug, but she wants to go more country French. So you might want to go some, a little more neutral with the rug or a little, you know, you certainly can go toned down, but I like the rug, but I can understand that it's not really that French looking. So you might look for something more of a two color rug. I love a flat weave and maybe a two color pattern, a very simple pattern. Uh, I think you can look for those. I love the prices on Overstock and they've got a massive selection there. So I think that's one thing you can do. And I can see, you know, the rug had a lot of color in it and the sofa is a kind of a dark brown. So I know she wasn't happy with that. So I think I would uh, start with, if you're wanting to replace the sofa, you know, Wayfair has lots of sofas. Uh, You can check out there what they have. But also, you know, if you can go in some stores near you, if you can actually sit in a sofa and check it out, that's a great way to go so that, you know, you know, you're going to be happy with the comfort level of the sofa, but you know, they, you can get about whatever you want. Uh, So I, I hate to advise not knowing what color or what you want to go to. Obviously, if you want to do country French, you want to probably go with something a little more neutral, maybe a solid color, um, so I would just kind of, and then I would pick out the sofa and then pick the rug to go with the sofa. That would be my suggestion there. And then, um, I, I think we have some episodes where we have some rugs and sofas that we like that we can link to uh, those, those episodes where we talk sure. about all of that. And then on the wall, it's a very big wall to the side of the sofa, 
with a lot of little photos on it. And I know she was saying um, that she the 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 pictures are family pictures that are important to her. So I, you know, I certainly would never suggest getting rid of them, but I might move them somewhere else because when you have that big a wall, a lot of little pictures can feel very confusing and it doesn't have a soothing effect. So I would highly recommend going with one large piece of artwork on the wall or perhaps a set of three that go together uh, that are kind of larger size, and then take those smaller frames and put them on a smaller wall somewhere, maybe in the hallway or your bedroom. And I think that's a great way to kind of keep them together, but kind of, you know, in someplace else where it's not on this very prominent large wall would be my suggestion. Yeah, I agree on that. They're, um, they're kind of, they feel like a little bit like they're floating. So if you're doing a gallery wall and they're, they're all sort of around the same size, there's maybe one that's bigger. I think when you're doing a gallery wall, you maybe you want a cup, like maybe three larger ones, maybe one on the horizontal, two on the vertical or the, you know, the other way around. And then maybe add in some smaller pieces around it. I would also suggest, Roberta, that if you want to have them be a little bit more unified and maybe pop even a little bit more. Maybe choose a black frame or a dark, darker brown or like a washed gray, something like that. I think it, they'll pop off your very neutral, creamy wall. Um, I, they do feel floating there. What you could do with that end of the room is maybe put a piece of furniture under them. They might have a sense that they're a little more grounded. But I, I think I agree with Nita that maybe move them to a different wall and then put a bigger piece of art there. As far as the kid things, which is definitely something ever, a lot of people talk to us about, uh, your room is very tidy. You must have cleaned it up before you took the it picture. Right. <laughs> uh, yes. Or the kids are at school or something like that. Go ahead. Clean out your closet. Then head straight to Quint's. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. You've got some bookcases and in one spot, I see you're kind of like sharing with a little a wooden dollhouse. And then I see you have an iron stone pitcher in there on a, and it's sitting on a stack of books. So it's kind of like that area 
you know, it's kind of kid, but then you're kind of doing your, your vignetting there. Maybe what you do is, you know, you, you have one of those bookshelves is for the kids. Uh, maybe it's the one that has the the cabinets and everything is closed in there. And then you get to decorate those couple of open shelves the way you want to. Um, uh, Roberta's daughter or, or son or both have a really cute little, uh, wooden kitchen that's painted the same color as all the furniture. So it really blends nicely. Um, but if there are any sort of primary color things, maybe you just want to take them away unless they're really playing with it. But I would- Well, re- that's what I was going to mm-hmm. say, Roberta. Are they really playing with these toys? Because I cannot tell you how many times we would buy these toys, the little kitchenette or whatever for the kids. And I would think, oh, they're going to be playing with us. Oh, it's going to be so nice. Oh, it's so cute. And then, you know, a couple of days later, they're done with it. So I would definitely look at these toys and say, are they really using them? Because if they're not, maybe don't keep them if they're not using them. Or if they're not using them that much and you don't want to keep, and you do want to keep them, maybe just move them to their room so they can still have them on the few times they do use them, but you're not having to deal with them in the living area. So, I mean, those are a few options Mm -hmm. to consider. Yeah. Uh, and there's an, a nice tufted ottoman in the room for you know, moving from kid central to more relaxation area. Maybe pull that over to the chair or whatever chair is going to be there and actually use it as an ottoman or slide it over by the sofa, put a tray on it. And now you have a coffee table and maybe add in a storage uh, trunk. It could be it could be fabric on the top or it could be wooden where the kids can put their toys in there. So um, in general, I think, you know, you're obviously doing a great job, you know, keeping the things contained, but you, you know, you can still see the kid things. Um, As far as the TV, gosh, this question comes up so often. Uh, Roberta has a lower console that probably has the TV equipment, whatnot. And then the TV is above it, just sort of hanging there alone. You know, it's a fine, it's a clean look, but if you wanted to have the TV feel like it was a little more integrated, maybe you um, get a piece that has a hutch on top of it where the TV goes inside of it, or you sort of build something around it to make it feel more um, like it's part of that piece of furniture. Um, The One thing that I noticed in the room, and again, this might be with a lot of people, is Everything seems a little low. I, I would like to see some height in this room. So maybe in the corner, you know, put a tall plant or, you know, bring the TV up or just some, stack some things on top of one of the cabinets. I, I'd like to see your eyes go up a little bit in this room. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to come up with a, a bigger piece to, or taller piece to put the TV on. That's not a bad idea. I like that. Okay, so I hope that helped, Roberta. I know, um, but your your room is lovely as mm-hmm, it is. It is. And, uh, but, you know, maybe with these tweaks, then you can help you achieve that relaxation and a little bit more a French country look. So I hope we helped you with that. And thank you again for finding us and listening to us. Again, fun day, chatting away with you guys. As always fun. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.